Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Peter Harris with Mac Village Media, and this is our continuing series on Parallels Desktop for Mac along with Parallels Access. Today, uh, joining me again is uh, my dear friend, Kurt Schmucker, who is the Senior Product Manager for Parallels. Good afternoon, Kurt. Hi, Skeeter. Nice to see you again. Good seeing you, too. So for those of you that don't know, uh, Kurt is, the uh, again, the Senior Product Manager from uh, Parallels. In prior lives, Kurt actually worked at Microsoft and was the uh, product uh, t uh, development uh, manager for uh, a virtualization product uh, called uh, Virtual PC for Mac. So, uh, uh, Kurt, obviously we're, we're excited to be back online here and uh, have missed doing these things, so thank you for everyone who's watching. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, Parallel's latest version of Parallel's Access, which is a remote control, a remote access application uh, called Parallel's Access 2.5, uh, specifically for iOS and Android. Uh, so, Kurt, uh, you know, back to you, and uh, let's go at it. Okay. So I assume you're seeing my screen now? Yes, I do. Okay, very good. So, as Skeeter mentioned, today we're going to talk about a new release of Parallel's Access. Um, and uh, I'm going to give a live demo also. So for those of you who aren't familiar, Parallels Access, as Skeeter mentioned, is a tool that gives you the ability to connect to your PC or your Mac from your tablet or from a phone. And as you'll see in a moment, we're actually going to extend that definition in the 2.5 release. Um, what I want to do is talk about the new release and show you some of the features. And of course, as always, we're happy to take any questions, so go ahead and submit your questions via the instant messaging feature in Google+, and Skeeter will be moderating those for us. Okay, so um, we've not, Parallels Access has now been out for almost two years, and we just released uh, 2.5. It has a number of new features. As you can see in my little picture of my devices there, we're now supporting more devices. So we're available, uh, we work with the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus, as well as the Kindle Fire, and of course, Android devices. In addition, we added a number of new features. We tried as much as possible to keep the features the same on Android and iOS. That isn't always uh, possible. Sometimes there's just a feature that's so great, we want to make it available on one platform, even if it can't be done or can't be done easily on the other platform. And so that little bit, that, that still happens. There's still a little bit of differentiation between the two platforms. But in general, we try to keep them in sync. So we've added a, a universal file manager in iOS that I'll demo in just a few moments. It allows you to manage your files. You know, on the Mac, you know, Finder is a great file manager, and Windows Explorer is a fine file manager. But it's designed to interact with, on a big screen, with a precise pointing device, typically a mouse or, or, or a trackpad or something like that. And that's not the case What you get, that you have those with a tablet or a phone. So what we wanted to do in our universal file manager is do a file manager that was very touch friendly, that would work on phones, work on tablets, and make operations easy to do and not, you didn't have to worry about really super positioning, super fine positioning of your finger that's often very hard to do. We also, of course, uh, wanted to take advantage of some of the features in iOS 8 on uh, the iPad and the iPhone. And so we, we've uh, used that to do things like copy and view files, things like this. We also can play sounds from the remote computer on your tablet or your phone, which is really nice. Um, just the other day, I booted a uh, new machine in my Parallels Access account. And I heard the Windows start sound on my tablet, even though that machine was like many, many miles away. Um, so that's kind of great. And another feature we've added, as I mentioned, I alluded to the fact that we're going to kind of change the definition of Parallels Access in this release. So up till now, Parallels Access has been a tool you use on your phone or your tablet. We've also now added the capability to go from computer to computer. So I can sit at one computer and connect with my computers use the apps, do things, get my documents, things like this. And we'll also show that during the demo later. So those are the, uh, the main features in Parallels Access 2.5. And I want to jump now to some live demos. Hey, Kurt, uh, while you're doing that, just to jump in briefly, 
Uh, while there's a little bit of difference on some unique features based on the platform, whether it's iOS or Android, you know, I think it's important to make sure that everybody understands that the the main feature set is is really parity equivalent between uh, the platforms. So you know, you're not getting a watered down version, for instance, on an Android device over, say, an iOS device. Uh, Skeeter, you're exactly right. I, I list here, for example, support for the Samsung S Pen. Well, that's clearly not going to be on the iOS version or the iPhone version. And that, that's an example of a feature that was just so natural to implement on that platform, we went ahead and did it, even though it brought a certain amount of feature disparity between the two, two platforms. But that's okay. We want to take advantage. Of, if you've got that particular tablet, that particular phone, we want to give you the best possible experience. And that's what we're doing there. Okay, so with that, I'm going to go to live demo. So you should be seeing now on your screen my iPad. So yeah, what I'm going to do... We are. Okay, good. What I'm going to do now is launch Parallels Access. And when you launch Parallels Access, it shows you the machines you've configured to connect to from your account. So for me, I have a bunch of machines, probably too many. Um, and I'm going to just scroll through them now. And I'm going to connect to the computer at my home. So if I just tap on that big icon there on the screen, I'll connect to that. And Kurt, while that's connecting, you know, one of the things I noticed there is you've got Macs, you've got Windows PCs, so it works across multiple uh, computer OS types, correct? That's correct. Those, those two, exactly. Windows and Mac. And I have a list at the end, end of my slides of the exact hardware and the exact OS versions that we support. So what I don't want to do a sort of generic demo of uh, Parallels Access today. I want to focus on 2.5. But for those of you who haven't seen it before, what you're seeing here now we call the App Launcher, which is a way of giving you a touch-friendly way to launch various apps. So I could, for example, tap on uh, Word for Macintosh here in the second line of my screen, and I'll now get Word, and I can open up a file on my remote machine and see and interact with that file. I have all the capabilities of the, the remote machine, but I also have capabilities that are, that are unique to the Mac, or unique to the iPad, for example, the iPad style selection handles and the iPad keyboard, things like this. So we'll leave that for later, and we'll um, now talk about things that are unique to the 2.5 release that just came out. So I'm going to disconnect, uh, I'm going to uh, go back to my app launcher, and you'll notice an icon here that's new if you're a parallel access user, and that's this icon right up here in the top of the screen, the file folder. And when you tap on that, you activate the uh, Universal File Manager, and I'll do so now. And so I'm connecting to the files that are on that remote Macintosh. You see in the left-hand side, the left, left pane of the, of the window, the various sort of high-level folders I can I can access, and I'm right now I'm pointing at my at my desktop, and that the desktop at this moment on my on my Mac has no files. So it's a very clean desktop. Um, if I go into my Documents folder, you see I have lots of documents, and notice that the files and folders are very big icons. They're very easy to read and to touch, and if I tap on a folder like this. I can go into and see the files in that folder. I'll get icons that are representative of the applications that launched those, or that can open those folders, or that created those folders, to be very precise. And for certain kinds of, of files, we can actually show you what's in them. If I tap on the, PN, the PNG file, screenshot for Sally in the second row, if I tap on that, I'll get it rendered. And I can actually see what that screenshot looks like, and Parallels Access will query the Macintosh and say, hey, what applications do you have that can open that file? And I could launch one of those applications from right here. And so it's a very friendly uh, and very easy to use with you know, the, the resolution of your finger to access these files. Let me go back now to that folder. Suppose I wanted to, you know, I, I, I want to bring to work that org chart I worked on in PDF there, but I forgot it. I left it at home. That's a very common scenario for me. I hope it's not for you. But what we can do here 
is I can tap the little icon at the top right of the screen, a little circle with a checkbox in it. I want to select a file. And so the screen changes a little bit. And now I can select that file. And when I do, a bunch of commands become available in the left-hand pane. And one of those is copy. So I could copy that file like this. And now I have to pick a location. And notice the top of the screen changes to give you a sort of big red border that shows you what you can do now with that, what state you're in. And I'm in the state where I want to paste something. If I want to go to the location, I want to paste it, and then paste it there. I could move it to a different folder on that remote machine. Sure, no problem. That isn't what's needed right now. What I want to do now, I want to not be on that remote computer. I want to be on the local iPad that I'm on here. So I'm going to click on this device. And here are the files I've brought onto my iPad so I could share them with people, so I continue working on them and so on. You know, I, uh, I'm, I, I have, for example, Microsoft Office for the iPad. So if I wanted to work on this PowerPoint presentation here, I could do so locally and then re-upload it somewhere. I also, as you can see in the left, left pane, I have my Dropbox account and my Google Drive account linked to Parallels Access. So I can easily go there and drop a file in my Dropbox or retrieve a file from Dropbox or Google Drive. It's a, it's a really nice way to move your files around. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to paste that file in place here. And so it's now pasting that file, and there it is. So what we've done, tried to do in the Universal File Manager in Parallels Access 2.5 is to give you a very touch-friendly, easy-to-use file manager that you, you can use with the, re the resolution of your finger on the iPad or the iPhone. I'm using an iPad here because its screen is bigger and it shows a little better in demos. I happen to have an iPhone 6 Plus, and I use Parallels Access on that all the time. Is the screen smaller? Yes, the screen's smaller. But I always have my iPhone with me. I don't carry my iPad every single place I go. And so if I really needed to put a folder in Dropbox or move one to there or to email something to somebody, I can do it all from my phone. And that's really great. Kurt, so, yes, couple, please. couple questions for you on this. Uh, first one is, can you select multiple files at the time, and do they have to be the same file type, or could they be a mix match of maybe I don't know a Word document, an Excel spreadsheet, or a or a or a graphic file like a, like a JPEG? That's the first question. The second question is: Is there any limit in terms of file size that you're aware of that uh, somebody would have to pay attention to? I don't know of any limit on file size. Uh, of course, you copy a five or six gigabyte file and move it to your iPad. That's going to take a little while. Right. But I don't believe there's any limit there. Let's try to select multiple files. So here I've gone into selection mode by clicking that little circle with the checkbox. I've selected that file and that file, and now I could copy both of them. They happen to be of different types. So in answer to your question about file type restrictions, no restrictions. Um, if it's a file type that the iPad can't render easily, then you might not be able to do a view it uh, as I did with that with that screenshot earlier. But you can still move it around. Uh, and that would be true for a file that you just don't have, a, there's no capability on the iPad or even on that Mac to render that file. That's okay. Same with Dropbox. So I could copy those, I could move those, I could delete those. Um, and then let's get out of here and go back. I can go back to my remote computer at home and go to my documents folder, go to my current projects, and see those same files there. So. The, the kind of scenarios that Parallels Access supports are, oh my god, I forgot that file that I worked on all last night I need for the presentation today. You can get that file easily. Or, I went off on a trip and forgot to put the file in the, in the shared Dropbox folder my team uses. Everybody else can access that file while I'm going on my trip. Even from the airport, if I have any kind of wireless access, I can use my phone or my iPad to grab that file, move it to the Dropbox folder, and therefore not inconvenience my team or have them be stuck without having access to that file, as an example. Um, these sets of capabilities are really very useful in rolling between devices. You don't always have every device that you have control of or own 
with you at every moment. I have a laptop. I have an iPad. Those often move with me, but not all the time. I have desktop machines, and those, of course, don't move so often. But Parallels Access gives me the ability to access those files and those applications that I have on, on those machines. You know, there are applications that I use that are never going to be ported to the iPad. They're just too big, and they're too computation intensive. And so I can use those applications and access those files with Parallels Access. I've actually gone on business trips where I really didn't want to lug my laptop with me. I just took my iPad, and when I needed to, if I needed a file on my home machine or my machine at work, or I needed to use an application that was only on those devices, I'd connect to those and so on. And so it really does make me feel connected everywhere. Skeeter. Kurt, a couple, couple things. First off, for the folks that have joined us live, thanks for joining us, and don't forget you can ask your questions live and we'll get to them. Uh, back to the, the Universal File Manager, though, Kurt. I know that we've talked about copying files. We've talked about moving files. But the File Manager does a whole lot more, right? It, it, besides the preview, I can rename. I can delete files. I can even put things in folders and organize stuff, right? Exactly right. And that's why we called it a File Manager. There's, it sort of has many of the features available in the Finder or in Explorer. Um, and and yet it's touch friendly and it works really, really easily on your iPad or your iPhone or your Android tablet or your Android phone. Thank you. Okay, um, so that, that's my, my demo of the file manager. It's kind of a simple demo because it's a really easy feature to use and we hope that our customers that have Parallels Access will find this useful and I think I can get out of this now while you're doing that, Kurt, just to just to build on what you just said, you know, I can tell you from firsthand experience, both on my Samsung Galaxy Note, uh, my Samsung Tab. I, I, of course, I've, I've played a little bit with it with an Amazon uh, Kindle, uh, and even my from my iPad. But you know, one of the, the neat things about it is that if you're familiar at all with either the uh, obviously Mac Finder or the Windows Explorer or the File Manager that's built into uh, you know the uh, the uh, uh, what is it the touch was uh, interface for Android you know that same metaphor works very seamlessly here with uh, you know with uh, uh, you know uh, parallels two point access 2.5 exactly right exactly right so we've tried to make you know you don't always have all your stuff all your hardware with you so whatever you've got we want to make it possible for you to connect to and use the applications you've got there Use the data you, that, and the files that you have on those machines or in, or in the cloud, and therefore you're productive wherever you are. That's kind of the, the, the basic idea. Now, another feature that we added in 3.5 is not one that runs on the iPad or the iPhone. It's a feature that allows you to connect to a, a remote machine just from a browser. And let me, let me get out of here now and go to a browser window and, and demo that. So give me a second here. So, Kurt, the computer-to-computer -computer, um, interface that you're about to show, this is really designed for the person that may not have their iPad handy or their phone handy, yet they need to do something quickly in sort of a, a very simple fashion uh, remotely from maybe, I don't know, uh, maybe a hotel lobby as an example, and they need to get something, I don't know, maybe, again, maybe like an itinerary or something that they've left at home by accident, that kind of thing. It's basically that kind of thing. You're correct. But I, it's, you know, you, you find yourself without your iPad or your iPhone, or you find yourself where you need a bigger screen. So you're on a trip, you can use a family member's computer, you can use a computer at a library or at the hotel you're staying at. The computer that you're going to use, and the way I'm going to do it here, is go to, you know, go to my Parallels Access account. So this provides security because, of course, you have to have your computers registered in order for this to work. Registered, and you have to know your account name and password. I'm going to sign in now here. And what you see in the short fullness of time. We always know how demo works, right? Yeah, demos work. Yeah, come time. on, guys. Don't, don't, don't be doing this to me now. Yeah. Uh. 
So in essence, what would what you what would you will be seeing once this refreshes is the computers that you've registered, just like you did on your your uh, your uh, tablet, and then exactly you can right. use and you know basically click on that, and then that tablet would or that that remote computer, even though you're doing it from a, another web, uh, web browser, would open up within the web browser on that computer. Yep. And I am embarrassed and ah, there we go. There we okay. Go. So, okay, so this is my my account. Uh, for parallels access, and as Skeeter mentioned, you see an interface that's very similar to the one that we had before on the iPad. Here are the my machines. I can go to that same machine here and just click on it like this. And now I'm establishing a, a connection, and I will log in as me. I have too many accounts. You do. Too many. Uh, I gotta remember the right password, right? Yep. And looks like I got it right. That's great. And Did remember, you? a few moments ago, I launched Word on that machine, and so Word is now running here. And that's exactly why it is. And I told you my desktop was clean, and in fact, it is. And that's why I can see that here. I had launched a preview to, to image that uh, screenshot, and that's also here. Now, I didn't mention this before, but when I connected to that machine, if you happen to be sitting at my desk, the screen would go gray, and you would see nothing. So you aren't showing, off, showing your work products or whatever you're doing, you're browsing to anybody in the office. Um, that isn't the case here. The screen has to show something, so we actually send you a notification, which went by so quickly, we don't see it, but connection is being accessed like that. And so yep. that's what that's happening here. You yeah, that, was, uh, that was an eye chart. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, you get a notification that this machine is being accessed remotely from Parallels Access, and it looks like the what you'd expect if you were doing this on a Mac. If you're doing it on a Windows machine, you get a notification in, in the taskbar at the bottom. But basically, it, it's an alert that lets you know what's happening. And now, I can do anything I could do on that machine, even if I was sitting in front of it. I can go to the files. You saw these files earlier. I can go to my current projects folder. I can get various views. And this is meant to be exactly like you were sitting in front of that machine and you want to do something. And so I have access to the applications that aren't available on the iPad. I have access to the data sets that are, that are uh, on that machine. And I can do things like copy things to the clipboard, get a keyboard for special key, key commands, things like this. We made that as a, to be so you can be as productive as possible when you aren't at your main machine. But you can see easily here, I'm getting a much bigger screen. So I, I have the ability to do something that would require a larger screen to see what's going on than I could on my on my iPhone or my iPad or my other tablet or phone. So that's the basic idea of this connectivity, but it's, you don't have to have it be restricted to just a tablet or a phone. So even you're, you're out, you don't have your, your devices with you, but you need to connect to a machine and do something, you can do so from any machine. The machine I'm running uh, this browser on need not have any software installed, just a browser. And with that browser, you connect to your Parallels Access account, and pick the machine you want to access. So, so Kurt, there's no third-party plug-in. Flash isn't required. There isn't anything on that remote computer that you're you're working at physically at that's needed. Only on the computer you're connecting to uh, in your home or whatever, right? You're exactly right, and you phrased it very well. That machine you're sitting in front of, you're physically in front of, and it is a little strange when you talk about this. You talk about several machines at the same time, it's easy to get confused. So we try to be really, real clear. And when I go back to my list of machines, for example, these are the machines that I either own or control, have access to, and you're correct. I had to install the Parallels Access Agent on these machines and register them in my account in order to be able to connect to them remotely. But once I do that, I can, in fact, connect to them either from a phone or a tablet or from any browser. And so I and uh, the ability to do that 
is an important thing to give people the access, even if they don't have their tablet or phone around with them. We are um, really happy to make this capability available, and we think it actually might become a very important use of Parallels Access as we move into the future. Cool. And you notice some of my machines are offline. That's OK. Uh, that Yosemite test machine is a machine I use to build, to, to test early versions of Mac OSs on. It's actually right now closed and turned off in my drawer. And I'll be doing it using it you know, later, but that's why it's offline. In those cases, if it's offline, it could be asleep, and you can wake it up from here. OK. So that's what I wanted to show you about the new ability in Parallels Access to connect to a remote machine from a browser. I'm going to go back to my slides now. And, and Kurt, while you're doing that, just to remind everybody that's watching, that's a brand new, net new feature in Parallels Access 2.5. Correct. Okay, so I've showed you the, the two things I really cared the most about and can show easily. However, another feature that I really, really like, I can't show easily because I don't have a, a, a Samsung device with an S Pen. So what I'm going to do is go to a video that we have available, and Skeeter has his there. Bert, here's mine. Uh, and, <laughs> Yes, you pull, if you pull up the video, I'll, uh, I'll walk through it uh, for folks. I will do so. There it is. Let's see if I make that a little bigger. Actually, if I talk while it's playing, they won't, uh, they won't be able to see it. So I'm going to let you play it, and then I'll, I'll summarize it. Should I go full screen or not? If you can. Whoa. Still see it? Yes. All right. And I am now trying to play. But there we are. So there you see the interface on the Samsung device. And that's Skeeter's finger. And he's trying to draw with his finger. And that's actually kind of hard. There's a kind of distance, but now look with the S Pen, it's just as fast and fluid as you'd expect, and there's not a problem getting exactly to the precision point you want to get to, to grab a photo, move it around, to change some text, and there's the keyboard and so on. Even an operation that's quite difficult to do, outlining a graphic and grabbing it to actually actually extract it from the background or to filter it. And that that's it. Parallels released. Parallels desktop kind of for Mac. Oh. That's another video plan. There you go. Yeah, so so basically, Kurt, what I, I would say this screen might have been an error. Yeah, so Kurt, basically what I would say to you would be that uh, you know, in having a Galaxy Note 4, which by the way is a great okay, great there we go. Uh, right. is what I would say is that Peter, I'm not hearing you. You're not hearing me at I all. See huh? you talking. Wow. Okay. Well, um, can you hear me now? Hello? Hello? Nothing, huh? One of the hallmark features that made Kurt... Better? Yeah, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay. So, Kurt, what I was trying to say was that, you know, the Galaxy, uh, Samsung Galaxy Note 4 is honestly, in my opinion, one of the nicest Android phones out there. Uh, and if you do like Android, that's this S Pen. It's a very compelling story. Uh, and, and you know, honestly, if it wasn't for you know Apple Pay and probably the Apple Watch coming out, you know, I would be very tempted to just say the heck with Apple and go right here. But with uh, Parallels Access 2.5, this stylus makes this mobile device so much more powerful because I can do things that you know while your finger is convenient. Uh, having the, the, the accuracy and precision that the S Pen gives you, as, I, as you saw in that little video that we played for everybody, it just really, it takes it to a whole other level. So, that's all. Very good. 
So people always ask me about where can I get Parallels Access and what's it, what's it cost. So I just thought I'd put a little slide in here to remind people that you can download it from the various app stores, the iTunes App Store for, for Apple, Google Play, or the Amazon App Store for Kindle. Download Parallels Access. It's a free application. You also have to put on your remote computers the Parallels Access agent, which you download from the Parallels website and install. That's also free. If you want to connect those, that takes a subscription. And the subscription costs $20 a year, and that gives you the ability to uh, connect to five remote machines on as many phones and tablets as you want. No, no limit there. And as you can see, it's also the application and the agent are localized in, in a wide variety of languages. So that is the basic stuff we wanted to talk about. Of Parallels Access 2.5, Skeeter. Anything you want to add? Just uh, in summary, uh, you know, for everybody that uh, attended, thanks for watching. Uh, you can certainly ask questions after you've watched this again, or on this event page on Google Plus, or even back over on YouTube. And Kurt and I will do our best to get you answers. Uh, if there's topics you'd like uh, the two of us to cover in the future, whether it's on Parallels Access 2.5 or even you know, doing a deeper dive on something here, or even going back and looking at Parallels Desktop uh, for Mac. Uh, we're, you know, we're both happy to do, that, do so, and uh, uh, thanks for watching. So, before, before we sign off, yep. I, I made the promise I would talk about the hardware and, and, and OS requirements. Oh, so I'm I have sorry. a slide here that talks about that. Basically, Android devices, Android 4 and up, um, iPad 2 and later, so not the very original iPad, and then iPhone 4S and later, you have to be running at least iOS 7. People are moving to iOS 8 pretty quick, so that, that probably is going to take care of that. In terms of the remote machines, basically it's Mac OS or, or Windows, and for Mac it's Lion or later, and for the PC it's Windows 7 or later, and then you're ready to go. And that's it. Cool. Anything uh, Anything as a wrap-up, Kurt? Uh, nothing else to, 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 to do so. There is a You can get a free trial of Parallels Access just by downloading it and, and signing up. So uh, give it a try, and, especially on your tablets or phones, and then use the new computer-to-computer -computer access feature. That's it. Yeah, perfect. And, and for those of you that haven't tried it, as Kurt said, it is free. Uh, if you're on Android, you can find it on the Google Play Store, you know, obviously uh, iTunes on your uh, your iOS device, and if you have an Android device or a, uh, Amazon Kindle Fire, uh, you can go over to the Amazon App Store and it's there too. So, hey, again, thanks for everyone for watching. Uh, we really appreciate your time and uh, look forward to uh, talking to you again in the future. So bye now. Bye.